Hey, what's going on everybody? Today the price continues to sell off. What is happening? It continues to bleed, really. And um, you know, we'll talk about all of that. To me, everybody's very bearish right now. And that could be a good sign. It could be a bad sign. We'll see. But since everybody is bearish, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, talk about the ultimate, ultimate bearish scenario, the macro bearish scenario, you know, to appease the bears out there. So let's talk about that. And I'll do it um, with XRP and with Bitcoin. This is not my thesis. This is not my primary idea. Um it can be if things change, but right now I don't see that. I've looked at this chart too many times to think um, it's capable of that. But anything is possible. Um, anything is possible. And a dump down, you know, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary. Now, to talk about the mega bearish idea, we have to kind of look at what happened the last time. So... You can see how the price was going down into reaccumulation, similar how it's going down into reaccumulation, right? And then we had this sort of channel right here, and you can see the price completely dumped to the downside, took out all of the lows, massive liquidity um, grab right here. So if that were to happen again, that could totally happen again. So if I draw a trend line like this and I put it right there and I basically, you know, draw it like how it would do that. So let me see something like this. Um, I'll come up and then come right back down. And this, um, you know, would come all the way down to take out the lows here. Just like this one did. You can see this wick took out this low, which is the equivalent of this low. So we'll be conservative and say right about here. Um, and then it starts to swoop up and take off. So that could totally happen. Um, it happened last time, right? Now, anytime you have a channel that's ascending, right? It's basically engineering liquidity. And what the market makers like to do, right, is they see this demand line right here and they see the supply line. So, you know, we get down to the trend, we bounce off. We come to the trend, we bounce off. We get to the trend, we bounce off. So people are used to that fact. But what happens if you lose it? Then shorts pile up and you get a big dump, right? People get very bearish, but it really is a trap, a bear trap, right? And then you start to take off to the moon. So I can, I can see that happening similar to what happened with Bitcoin. So check this out. Let me show you Bitcoin here. Remember C19? You know, we're not supposed to talk about that, right? But that's exactly kind of what happened here. We had a rise. We had a crash. We had a retracement. We went down into reaccumulation, right? We were going sideways. It wasn't so much of a channel, but look at this right here. We had a massive liquidity trap, right? And uh, we didn't take out this low, but we took out all of these right in here. Right. So if I were to measure that, um, let's see, let's let's this is a never before seen video. I've, I've never talked about it. I thought it would be a good time to talk about it since, you know, people are bearish. But this thing went all the way. I don't think it'll be that dramatic, but I think a 786, 702, 786 would be not in the you know sort of in the realm of possibility if we were to get this liquidity trap so um you know with bitcoin this has happened before we had a rise crash retrace reaccumulation sideways liquidity grab and then we went to the moon so let's go back to xrp 
And let's talk about that. But first, you can kind of see the same thing that happened with Amazon. We went into, you know, we had a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation. And then look at this. Right here, we had this liquidity grab. We came up. We built another base. And look at this. We had another liquidity grab before going on. Because what happens is, sometimes what happens is, people are expecting a big breakout. People are expecting a big um, advantage in taking a long. But a lot of times when people position themselves, over leverage themselves in a long position, and there's too many of them, the market makers want to wipe out all that leverage. They want to deleverage the market. Basically start fresh. That way they can build and continue pumping, right? So, um, you know, that, that could be a factor here. So let's continue to talk about that. So the same thing that happened with Bitcoin, right? We had a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation. We went sideways. What if we get this black swan type of mega dump, right? That then brings us back to the upside. If that occurs, people are going to lose it. It's going to be insane, Right, because it's not going to just happen to XRP. It's going to happen to all the coins. Every coin is going to get hit hard if that happens. But if it did happen, it would only be another bullish sign because everybody wants this to happen. This massive breakout. So everybody puts the fractals and all of a sudden everybody's an expert in but there's so many different factors that go into it. But the big thing is, how did the price do that? Well, it had a rise. We have a rise. It had a crash. We have a crash. We had a retracement. We have a retracement. We have a reaccumulation. We have a reaccumulation. Um, you know, now we're in building our base, our sideways reaccumulation range. That's sort of an ascending channel. I wish it was more flat versus ascending, right? Or actually, it would be better if it was descending because these usually break out, these usually break out, these usually break down, then out. But it's, I'll talk about why probably that isn't the case. Um, and a lot of the reason is. You know, when I was talking about this year, you know, we came down, we built our base, right? We broke out and now we're building a second base on top of this base. It does have that parallel ascending channel feel to it, though. So, you know, that's why it's tricky. Um, but yeah, but um, if this were to happen, if this were to be my primary idea, we would first of all have to lose the trend line and then also take out 43 cents. Or actually, uh, I would say the mid 40s, 47, between 43 and 47 cents. If we took that out, then I would lean towards this idea. I would actually make it probably my main idea. And it's not a bad idea. And it's not a bad thing either. People see that bearish. Oh, you know, I don't know what the price would be. Let's let's look at it. So remember, we did a 786. So let me put the Fibonacci retracement on. I'll bring it all the way to the top here. So if you look at the price, we already see that's another thing. We already went down to the 886. Right. We already went down to the 702, the 786. Right. So for t for it to break below, even below that, it would just be much, you know, it would be worse. Right. Um, than what Bitcoin did, comparing it to where Bitcoin landed on its Fibonacci trail when it got taken out. So, yeah, um, that's that's sort of the bearish idea. Right. And it, and it kind of makes sense. And again, if this happens. It's actually a good thing, not a bad thing. People say, I don't like, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's actually a good thing, right? Because if it happens, then you know 
something like this is more probable, right? When you're, let me take everything off the screen. When you're grinding up and up, right, it raises a lot of doubts or basically going sideways, not doing anything, cryptos taking a dump. It brings a lot of doubts and suspicions. But when you have blood in the streets, right? Remember this? C19, look at that. Everybody was bullish right here. We went up, yay, we're going up, bam, we come down. When this happened, people were incredibly bearish. But that was the best time in the world to buy because that's what kicked off the bull run. Now, if you come back down here, same thing, right? We're kind of doing nothing. We come down. Oh, we're bearish. We're bearish. And then bam, OMG, we just took out this. We took out this, right? Everybody's incredibly bearish. And then bam, we go to the upside. So even kind of similar to what happened here, we had a pump, we came down, we took out this low, this candle right here took out this low, and that's what kicked off the retracement. So um, the, the more we go down, the more likely it is for this ultra bearish scenario to occur, which is actually, quote unquote, ultra bullish if you really think about it because if this occurred we would be at that final stage of the big uh you know of the big breakout so if i just play around and i take a bars pattern here and i just do that everybody's done it so why not again so i'll just put it right there right i'll just put it right about there so there you go that's kind of what it would look like. Um, so let me put the two-week chart on. There we go. And you can kind of get a visual representation of this mega bearish idea, which is actually, um, at the end of the day, would be the best thing for XRP because it would just wipe out all the weak hands. It would, you know, people don't like XRP. It pumps, it dumps, it pumps, it dumps. But here's the thing. You're right. That's true. It's highly manipulated, suppressed. Um, I don't think they're ready yet. I don't. I think the lawsuit is is coming this year. But here's the thing. If we pump, we dump. If we pump, we dump. But what happens if you don't pump, but only dump, right? We didn't pump. We haven't pumped in forever. So, you know, if we get this big dump, it wasn't following a big pump. You know what I mean? So if we get a dump, so instead of a pump and dump, it's actually going to be a dump and pump. If I just made that completely confusing i apologize but you know what i mean so that's kind of what it would look like so you can see this down here and compare it over here so what do you think you think that's possible and that would that fractal has it going down to 26 cents. I mean, I'm talking to a guy, a relatively decent, I would say a good trader, and he's targeting 17 cents. That's where he thinks it's going. Now, I don't really agree with him on that front. Uh, I don't think it would go that low, but hey, anything's possible. So I'm just giving you, this is not my main idea my main idea was in previous videos i've always talked about those ideas but i would be doing you a disservice if i didn't talk to you about the most bearish idea which would be this one now there is an even bigger bigger bearish idea and uh, we'll talk about that one now but that one's really out of the realm at least right now because 
of this right here. So we'll, we'll talk about that. So if I take a channel here and I put it all the way down and I drag it all the way, I want to put it right there. That way we get this connection, this connection, this connection. This was an exuberant C19 sell off, right? So if that's the case, where do you think it's going? Well, this one over here doesn't look too good as a channel, but if I put it on, you know, it's somewhat okay. Um, you can see it wicked down here. Maybe we get something like that, right? Um, so we have our resistance, resistance, you know, almost resistance. We have support, support. So it looks like, you know, it needs to come down here before we go up. And that would be detrimental, right? That would take out the C19 low of 13 cents that would get down here to about six cents so people say i'm too bullish on xrp but here you go it has the capability to go all the way down to six cents and i'm not talking just xrp i'm talking all the coins if this happened for xrp it would happen to to every coin out there no one would escape it because if this occurred, there would be something much more deep than what, what we see right now, right? But, you know, with Bitcoin at an all-time high, it consolidating, um, it's above its bull market support band, you know, it doesn't seem likely. I mean, now if we start to lose all of that, then it'll get more likely, right? But essentially you have um, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then one, two, three, and then go. So you would have a W, X, Y. So you would have this three wave move here and then continue higher. Now, the reason I don't really like that too much is because, um, you know, let me just put it back on real quick, is because we already have three here so let me see one two three one two three and then we have another one two and three so we already have three right but let's say let's say that wasn't the third right let's say that wasn't the third so then i would take this and i would um i would drag it here and say okay that's three but the reason why that doesn't look too good is because if you look at this high here, it went all the way in the price territory of this of this wave up here, right? Which is not which is okay, but you know from a proportionality standpoint, it's a little bit off to me because we do have one two. And if this is three and this is four and this is five, right? You have wave um, four overlapping into the price territory of wave one and two, right? So technically you would want it to stall right about somewhere over here, come back down, but it went way up here. One, two, three. I mean, really you would want it to be four and five but it came way up here. I mean, I guess it's still possible, but just letting you know, I mean, that's kind of where that stands. So, um, it's, you know, it's not, the chart is not looking too good at the moment. We've lost the bull market support band, but we still have, you know, go to the, to the weekly chart, we still have the rest of the week right we need i would like to see depending it really depends how this week ends if this week can end above the bull market support band and we get a big rally that would be great 
and we have what's today's Wednesday. So we really have a couple more days, right? Really not counting the weekend. But let's say if we do lose that, now we'll get into the other bearish aspects. And when I mean bearish, I mean short-term bearish. Because nothing's going to, you know, pry my XRP away from me. Of course, if you're trading, it's different. But if you're hodling, you know, I don't I don't mind. Um, so the other idea, right, is basically suggesting down. So let's try to figure out if the price were to go down, what would it mean? Well, we already talked about the channel here, right? So if the channel broke to the downside, like this, it comes down, you know, maybe it breaks the low all the way down here. I, I don't know. Well, we'll, you know, we'll see what kind of event that is, but it comes down here it grabs this liquidity and then it goes. We already talked about that. So let's let's move on. And that and also that is just a copy of what happened over here where you have this channel, you break down, you grab that liquidity, then you get that monster move. So the other thing would be to lose this triangle here, right? So you have this demand line and it's really have a lot of open space at the top so this down this um, rising trend line is getting pretty worn out right the more time it hits the more likely it is to break down so we really need to get out of here we need to get away from this because it's it'll you know eventually spell trouble um but yeah that that would just be another way to look at it if we lose this trend line it would most likely be a fake out back to the upside. Um, and the reason I say that is because if you look at it from, we still have this triangle here, A, B, C, D, and then all it would be is an E wave. So even if we did break it, it would still be a, it would still be a triangle, right? The reason why is because, um, you know, we need three waves, right? So we had one, two, three, and A, one, two, three, and B, one, two, three, and C, and then we have one, two, three, and D, and now we need one, two, three, and E. So we have one, two, and maybe we get three down to the downside, and that, and that's another confluent um, idea for a break to the downside. Grab that liquidity, take off, right? Similar to how it happened down here. You could see wave E also um, uh, broke the low here. So we have A, B, C, D and look what E did. E came to here on the bodies of the candle. That's one other thing. You want to see a wick, not not bodies. You don't want a body breaking below the low. You want a wick, which is okay. So you can see the E wave came down. We wick below the C. So, you know, if that were to happen in such a case, it could look like that. Now, maybe not so deep. Let's remove that. Maybe something like this. We have one, and then this is all part of that two, and then we get something like a three, and then we get going. So it's yet to be determined yet, right? Really depends, again, on Bitcoin. Now, if Bitcoin is going to go all the way down to the bull market support band, which I've said many times that it, it's a good idea if it did that. Um, let's see. So right now, it looks like we're either getting consolidation before the next break, or this is distribution before a breakdown. But if we do break down, 
we have to test the, the bull market support band, hopefully bounce out of here and continue um, higher, right? So the sentiment, right? The, there's a lot of sentiment in the air, bearish sentiment, right? Let me go to the four hour chart with Bitcoin and I'll get back to XRP and I'll give you my my thoughts, my final thoughts there. Um, yeah, looking at it right now, it looks bearish. To me, it looks like, um, you know, this is kind of like a bear flag here. You know, we're kind of flagging out bearishly. So I would think something like this. So we have a one, two, right? And then this is three, this is four, and now we get five. So one, two, three, four, five. So I don't know how big five could be. We'll, we'll have to wait, but it looks like we're in some type of wave four. So if we line that up with XRP, um, we can get you know another move to the downside, right? Now, this fifth now that can turn into something like this where you get something bigger right we have five we have one two and then we get another five down and that would sort of lead us into the bull market support band right maybe it maybe it breaks the low a little bit and then you sort of create this this falling wedge or this, you know, this bullish bull flag or uh, descending channel, something like this, right? Um, so that's just an idea. That's another idea. I haven't presented a bearish idea, but it's actually long term bullish, right? Another idea with with it is it could potentially be, you know, some type of contracting triangle where you have A, B. C, D, and then you get E, and then you go. But if that's the case, we won't really want to start turning around soon. Maybe we get another hit to the low, continue higher. So A, B, C, D, E, then continue. Right? So, you know, it would, and that would make sense for a wave four, because usually wave fours are triangles um, oft, more often than not. Just looking at like XLM, I mean, XLM is still above its bull market support band, right? Um, I did talk about this. This looked to me bearish, right? Anytime, um, you know, you kind of chop up like this, it usually breaks to the downside. But that's actually a good thing because what happens is, okay, yeah, now I remember I haven't looked at it in a while. So you have one, two, three, four, five. You have a diagonal here. And then you get a three-way pullback. And usually that three-way pullback comes back down near the low. And that's sort of where you continue breaking out. Uh, reversing, I mean. But if it were to do this, where it would bounce back up and then continue down, then it would kind of be like the same thing, kind of like with Bitcoin, right? You would have this, this potential falling wedge in here. You know, something falling, right? Where you have this move to the upside. And then you correct, chop, chop, chop to the downside before heading back to the upside. Um, I'm looking at the bigger picture for XLM. You zoom out here. We have this trend line down here. Um, so if we do break down, I would look at look for it to test that and if that happened right to me it would look like we have this move down we have a three-way pullback and then we continue down further so it would be one two three so an a b c right so it'd be a b c so one two three right and then a b c down and then we get to this trend line and then would be another move back up so maybe w x y so then the whole thing would be a bigger three wave move right because i'm still looking for a retracement 
you know, we have this huge dump down, right? We're building a base down in here. I mean, that. let's not forget. Let's look at the bigger picture. We have this big move down. We have this base down here. It needs to work itself out, right? It needs to work itself out and continue up into its retracement. Right, because to me, I mean, the base doesn't look completely finished yet. I mean, it looks like you have some open air down in here, right? So we come down, we come up, maybe we come back down before then getting that retracement, right? Because we have this big move down, we have this base down here, we need to have a retracement. Question is, when did we get that retracement? Now we, we sort of, like I said, we have, you know, one, two, three up, right? We have one, one, two, maybe we get three down. So we're going up, we come back down so that we can go back up. And that would be a one, two, three. So we're probably in that B wave to the downside. Just talking bearish ideas. I'm trying to give as many bearish ideas as I can. So going back to XRP, I could say, you know, if we're in that E wave, right? Um, we could also say that we have an A. We have a B. We have a C. We have a D. And now we're getting that wave E. So we're almost finished. If, if this is the, you know, if this is the idea, right, that this E wave is a contracting triangle itself, right? So A, B, C, D, right? And this whole thing is E itself, right? Then that could be, um, you know, a, a potential scenario. And I've talked about that many times. So we could see XRP spikes 80% in volume. So volume spiking up, um, crypto bloodbath, right? It's not really a bloodbath, but it is pretty big. It's a big outflow, right? So, you know, looking at this as a triangle, this would sort of be my favorite idea here. My favorite bearish idea. We have one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, and this is one, two, and we're in that final third. So maybe we come down a little hot further down, right? We come down maybe to 53, 52, 53 cents right in here before continuing to break out. So we'll see. It, you know, that's sort of what I have for us there. Um, now, the way if this becomes invalidated and we continue to go down, then I would look at it as the liquidity grab, right? Where you have this channel, right? You come down, you all of this is support, support, support. You come down, you break that. I would look at it as very bullish. So I think any way you slice it or dice it, I think we're getting close. Um, if we do have a big move down, I think it's just that much closer to um, a reversal. So sometimes that's what needs, right? That's what is, you know, that's what it's needed is price going sideways. People give up. It capitulates. You know, we need capitulation. Um, so, you know, we'll see. So looking at the XRP market cap, um, you can see we are also on this main uh, trend line here. So this is going back from the beginning of the beginning, um, the macro chart. So we have support, support. So maybe we're trying to find support here, right? Um, if we lose it, maybe again, it could be a liquidity grab now. Um, sort of that's, that would be an interesting um, thing if we can find some support, because if you Maybe we have some type of channel here, right? Um, and let's get back towards the top. 
of this channel here. Now you can also bring it out even higher, but let's be conservative with it. Put it right about there. Um, yeah, so you can also argue that it hasn't even touched it yet. If I go, you know, wick to wick, you know, it still has further to go, right? So let me get it perfect there, right about there. So maybe it needs to test it, right? Somewhere along here. So if I zoom in on that, it's just a thought experiment. So somewhere like in here, so it doesn't have to go down. It can continue, you know, going sideways, maybe back down, then continue higher. It really, really depends, right? On what Bitcoin's going to do. But yeah, uh, that's the bearish idea. Now, you know, you can make, remember, you can make money both ways. If you're bullish, you hodl, right? But if you're trading and you want to, and you know, and you're confident that the price is going to go down, you can trade short, right? And you can, you can always make money regardless of which way the market goes. So yeah, it's kind of unfortunate um, that we have this dump, but it was talked about. And, uh, you know, so I think we could find some um, some support coming in soon. Um, I think we are getting a little oversold on the smaller time frames. So yeah, we'll see uh, how this continues to develop. My main thesis has been it's either an A, B, and a C, which we're getting now, which is normal. This is a normal thing, right? Or rise, crash, retrace. We're coming down for reaccumulation, but we are pretty close to the low, right? And then continue higher. So it looks like we're probably going to break the low. It looks pretty, pretty bearish now. Um, at least maybe one more low one two three four no i would say one two one two three four this would be one two maybe all of this is three and now we're in some type of fourth wave and then you get five and that would end it i mean we do have a little bit of bullish divergence it's not as good as it as yesterday let's see if i go up a little higher on the two hour it was taken out or actually i was looking at xrp versus bitcoin so yeah that would be you know and then also you have a shoulder you have a head and you have a shoulder you know you have a neckline here i mean the measured move for that would be pretty big if I went all the way to the top of the head, right, I would probably go more realistically right about there. Um, bring it back down. And that gives you a low about 46, 47 cents. So, so that'll, that should do it here. I mean, you know, we also have this one, two, three, four, five, and you can say A, B, and maybe we have a complex C wave where we have A, B, and then we have A, B, C in C or a W, X, Y. So something like that, right, where you come down. So, you know, there's, there is a good possibility we can break these lows and come down here before shooting higher. Now, my first argument would to say would be that E wave, if that gets taken out, then you know we want to see a wick out of there um if that gets taken out then you can say well we're most likely doing this this channel the same remember same exact thing that happened over here right um if i put this channel here it's not as much on the binance chart but you can see 
we came down pretty significantly and we we broke this trend before shooting higher so my question is does that happen again on this uh on this same time right so it could be but for me any way i look at it i look at it like this i'm still gonna hodl my main core position there's i mean we're not even close to me thinking otherwise um you know, when you look at it from a uh, zoomed all the way out, you can't even tell anything's happened, right? Uh, but anyway, I look at it, I still see a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation. I see this base, right? And I see that's the same thing that's happened before with many other assets like Amazon, Bitcoin. Rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation. You have the sideways base. Right. So for me, it's all about getting it worked out in here. However long it takes, it's about getting it worked out. And we also have A, B, C, D, E. Right. It's working out that E wave. And technically, we haven't had that third wave in wave E. So a b c d we need this e wave here and that would make sense for it to come down even further so i would say 47 between 43 and 47 would be and if we lose that then we can we could talk other options like you know depending on the event or if it's a liquidity grab but most likely it's probably going to be if it is the bearish idea if it's the bearish idea probably 43 47 cents but just because it's bearish in the short term when you zoom all the way out i'm still targeting five dollars and 65 cents to six dollars all the way up to that 13 14 dollar really about you know that ten dollar average price um so you know it just needs to like i said work itself out and it really depends on Bitcoin because you can see, right, I've talked about this too, with Bitcoin, um, to break its all-time high, right, we need um, some type of flat pattern to emerge. I mean, that could still happen, right, where you have this A, and then we come up for B, then we get that C for the flat. We did have a flat here, A, B, C, right? But when we came back up, look what happened. When we get into the retracement levels, that's where the decision is made. And you can see we came back down. So to me, that tells me we're probably forming. And I've talked about this for a while now is an A, B, C. Right. Or rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation. We go sideways in here. Let's see if we start finding support and we go sideways. We get reaccumulation, then we can go. If not, we break the low, we come back down into wave C, A, B, C, and then we get to test the bull market support band, right? And then by that time, XRP should be done selling off. So it, you know, it really depends because if you look at how high Bitcoin went, I mean, Bitcoin went pretty high which deserves a correction. XRP has just kind of been going sideways. So there's not much selling pressure for it to continue an impulse down. I mean, it could, right? Um, but that's why I think XRP versus Bitcoin, when you look at that chart, we could start to see some Wyckoff in here. Now this can come down and break the low, right and have a spring right maybe we're developing that spring in here but more importantly if you look at the weekly chart um or even you mean the four-day chart we have some bullish divergence coming in in here so to me it, it seems like bitcoin does need a, a substantial correction xrp looks like it needs to finish up that wave e it needs to continue going down but if you look at it from XRP versus Bitcoin, it looks like to me a reversal should come pretty soon. I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five waves down. 
Um, we're starting to base out in here. We could break the low. I mean, I think we're at that that final level where we get one more flush out um, before, um, you know, start really starting to reverse on this chart here. Now, when you look at the price of theta, right, when you look at the price of theta, I mean, this was also talked about. We had a big breakout here in this Wyckoff accumulation zone, right? So there's always a chance. I mean, that's why I still believe the market is very bullish. I mean, we broke out, right? We can always come all the way back down and back test the breakout zone. Theta looks more bullish than XRP because it has this big breakout. Now it's coming back down potentially to back test around, you know, $2, 175, $2 before continuing higher, right? And it could be a one, two, one, two, which would be really bullish. So yeah, the, the weekly candle definitely doesn't look good on theta, but again, it's a normal process. We can see, right? When you look at it from theta's perspective, one, two, right? You have another one, two, three, four, five, four, five, right? You have a five wave move. And then you have an A, we have a B and then now it looks like we're getting C. So we have a ABC coming down. And then hopefully we can test that bull market support band before reversing to the upside. So when when I look at theta, I think we're just in a major uh, bullish correction, right? So it, it, it feels very bearish. It feels terrible, but this is what needs to happen because if you take this big wave here, right, you cut it in half, that's right where the bull market support band is. That's usually where they pull back to in an ABC before continuing higher, maybe develop a base here before continuing higher. So right now, you know, if we take out this low, we could get a pretty big move down. So we'll keep an eye on it, but you know, um, not too much to say about theta. I will do a better, a more thorough analysis on theta sometime this week, but it's really the same thing as what Bitcoin's doing, obviously. I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five. That's an A. We have one, two, three, that's a B. And then we have a one, two. Now it looks like we're in three four, five, and then that would be C. And then we can flip out of here. So that's kind of my where my main thinking is um, for now. Now, when I look at total three, it looks like a flat, right? This looks like we have an A, we have a B, and now we're coming down for C. Now it can be a running flat, it could be a regular flat, or it can be an expanded flat, right? Where it can start to reverse out of here and some wherever it wants right um now typically you want five waves i only see um probably only one or two waves there so still got some time and we got plenty of wiggle room as well but amidst all the carnage look at theta fuel Theta fuel is still, it's, it hasn't sold off. It's still hanging in there real nice and tight. It hasn't gotten any big moves down, right? Of course, it had this big move down, but it, because we had this big pump, right? So um, I'm still looking at, you know, theta fuel as a flat. So we have an A, B, and a C. So we're, 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 we're getting close to, to it finishing up here. As far as Ethereum goes, um, you know, we have an A, we have a B, and now it looks like we're getting one, two, three, four, five, and then four, five. So we need a one, two, three, four, five. So A, B, C. Um, and then you have the bull market support band right there. 
So, I mean, it makes sense that we continue going down, but I think that down is, is very close to a reversal. So, you know, I would say an Ethereum is the king altcoin. So once Ethereum starts to balance out, right? Um, you know, same thing with, with Aave. I mean, a lot of these coins, A, B, C. Now, rapid fire, I'm going to do a rapid fire video this week. I'm not going to do it today. I just wanted to come out and show some of the bearish ideas. Um, ADA. Now, look at ADA. ADA already made its ABC, and it's already on its bull market support band. Right? So we went up one, two, three, four, five, and then we have A, B, C, right? I guess a real bearish thing you can say with ADA would be A, B, and then we get a C. It could be a flat, but I don't think so. Um, so hopefully ADA continues to hold its bull market support band. Because even, you know, with ADA, right, we have this Wyckoff accumulation here, right? We come back up. We're, we're dancing around in here before that breakout. Same thing with Theta Fuel. Let me show you with, or let's see, Filecoin. Same thing with Filecoin. Right? We have this Wyckoff accumulation. We come up here. We're dancing around in here before we break out. Same thing with HBAR, but HBAR, you could see HBAR broke out. Right. And now it's kind of back testing. It's waddling around in there after this Wyckoff accumulation. So everybody remembers this right here. This is Theta Fuel. Look at Theta Fuel and, the, and nothing's changed really. Um, comparing it to the, the Wyckoff example here. We are still right here. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. So we had this move up, right? Same thing here. We had this move up. We came back down, take out the low, came back down, take out the low, came shot back up, right? Shot back up without taking out the high, shot back up without taking out the high. Then we had this rounded, you know, bottom here. Some people you call it a creek depending on the schematic. Right, same thing in here, and then you shoot out, you break above the resistance, and now you're playing around up here. Same thing that's going on. So once it works itself out, one, two, three, four, and then go, one, two, three, four, go. So yeah, I, I would say we have more um, correcting to do, but I think we're getting close. Because if you compare it, right that's kind of where we're at so maybe it's creating some kind of uh triangle one two three four five some kind of triangle before the breakout so and unless we start breaking below this i would say we have nothing to worry about we have plenty of wiggle room right xrp is in a more dangerous area but the rest of the market is just doing fine. Bullish correction, I would say. We have the bull market support band rising. We're clearly above it. We haven't tested it yet. So like I said, we have plenty of wiggle room to the downside. So unless, the, the only reason I would flip bearish totally on all the markets is if you saw Bitcoin and Ethereum, Theta, if you saw all of those lose their bull market support band and get retested as resistance, then I would say, okay, the retracement is over. Now we're going into reaccumulation. So that's that's what I would say about that. But we're we're nowhere we're nowhere near there yet, right? So we'll just have to wait and see. But that'll do it for this video. And by the way, somebody uh commented um saying, I don't think XRP will be the total reserve currency. I don't think so either. I don't. I mean, maybe it does. I don't know. But I, if it can get one percent, that's all. You, that's all you really need. But here's Lynette Zhang. 
She's a gold bug. She's really smart. Um, so listen to what she says right here about it. That she's talking. They're talking about XRP. Listen to this. Settlements publishes their money flower, and there is a small space in that money flower for those private cryptocurrencies. So, so what she's talking about is there is a small space, right, for private cryptos like XRP and things like that. I'm not saying it's going to be a total world dominating thing. I mean, it could be. I mean, we saw the World Bank talk about it. Right. We saw the IMF talk about it. I mean, not to say that it's going to be all that, but at least, hey, it has if it has a small percentage of something. Right. Think about the lawsuit, pay to play. Right. Um, and that's another th reason why, because when we get that settlement for XRP, I think that'll really turn things around. And I think that's supposed to happen within the next couple months. We'll see how that goes. I have no idea. You know how. You know, the law moves slow, so we'll see. But keep listening here. In that money flower were those private cryptocurrencies. So I agree with you that the winners of this have already been chosen. And there you go. I think that too. The winners have already been chosen. And I think the winners need to go through a scrutinized test. Of, and I think that's what the lawsuit is about. Basically a vetting process for Ripple and what their role is going, you know, to assume a role. Now, I do think there's going to be many more winners to come. And I do, I think Theta and Theta Fuel is going to be a big winner. Big winner. Um, maybe not go government oriented, maybe not central bank oriented, but, you know, utility oriented nonetheless. Keep listening. I believe so. Right, and and I think that you just named the two that are most likely that, and I think also Wall Street's totally adopted it. So, Lynette Zhang basically just said, you know, I think the two that you just mentioned, which was XRP XLM, are going to be that chosen one to to facilitate some of these private matters. Now, maybe if they're successful, they move on to bigger things. Maybe they get to derivatives. Maybe they get to this. Maybe they get to that. The point is, as an investor, you start, you know, like Amazon, right? They started out with books. Then they moved to different things. And now they do everything, right? And that's kind of what Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, has stated. Once they get this lawsuit over with, that's ammunition, right for the price then they're going to ipo that's more ammunition then they're going to do other things right um so there's a, there's a long road ahead so you know i'm here to just be in, in enjoy like like for example people's 401ks do you think you think you know like a 401k they'll they'll get a stock or a bond you think they just hold it and then sell it to, uh a year later, no, they hodl, right? It's there for when you retire. You buy it, you hold it for decades, 20, 30, 40 years, and then you tap into it when you retire, right? And that's that's kind of how my position is with certain cryptos, is I'm gonna hold until, you know, pass it down to my grandkids and sell a little bit, you know, enjoy the fruits of my labor and everything I've done. And, but that'll mostly come from my trading, but my hodling is more, you know, investment, retirement, and then never really want to sell it, but utilize it. I want to live in a world where I don't have to sell crypto. I want to live in a world where I can use it, right? I want to buy a house with crypto. I want to, you know, use it. And, uh, but, you know, we need regulations. We need to defeat this fiat currency entity. Um, and I think that'll come um, eventually because people are going to understand just how terrible the central banking system is. And maybe that's where crypto takes a big dump, right? Maybe that's how it, maybe that's how it happens. 
is a big black swan event, uh, a cyber attack on our financial system, something that causes complete financial chaos. People lose everything for a moment, right? And then they try to push their CBDC system and then, you know, something rises, quote unquote, the phoenix rises from the ashes. And I think the phoenix is really all crypto. So, um, yeah, and it is election year. So we'll see how, what kind of events they pull out to disrupt the financial system. You know, we'll, I don't know. Maybe it's all a distraction for something else. All I can do is look at the chart and give my best judgment. And for me, on a macro, I'm more bullish. But there is room for some blood in the streets in the short term. And I've, and I've talked about that over the last several weeks about Bitcoin coming back down and ABC into the bull market support band, you know, you know, coming back down pretty, um, um, as far as percentage terms, pretty nice, right. For buying the dip. So we'll just have to wait. Um, I'll bring out another update soon, but that'll do it for this video. As always, if you want to support the channel, um, support my work and everything, uh, you can leave a tip for the YouTube tip jar I have here. And then also if you would be so awesome, if you can like the video, subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know what you think about everything. So uh, and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.